flagrant fouls and dirty plays. This man, should I say single-footedly, ended or at least started the end of the Spurs dynasty. Rants from coaches and players. How did the simple man from Georgia become the dirtiest player in NBA history? Hey guys, Purple Prince here and today I'm gonna take a look at the career of the dirtiest player in NBA history, Zaza Pachulia. Little Zaza started playing basketball at an early age in Georgia. At the age of 13, he was already 6 foot 8, full of dirty basketball and flagrant fouls. The height couldn't be ignored, so by age 15, he was playing for a Turkish professional team, Ulkerspor. In 2003, at age 19, he was drafted by the Orlando Magic with the 42nd overall pick in the 2003 NBA draft. In his rookie season, Zaza played in 52 games, started two of them, and in 11.3 minutes per game, averaged 3.3 points and 2.9 rebounds. He then was added to the 2004 expansion draft where he was drafted by the Charlotte Bobcats, but soon enough he was traded to the Milwaukee Bucks. Zaza spent only one season there as well, coming off the bench and averaged 6.2 points and 5.1 rebounds. Zaza Pachulia made the best decision of his NBA career when he signed a contract with the Atlanta Hawks in the summer of 2005. It turned out he would spend the next 8 seasons with the Hawks and those would be the best years of his career. Zaza became a starting center in Atlanta. With additional playing time and opportunities to score and rebound, also came additional time to collect them fouls. And he did. In his first season with the Hawks, he averaged 3.7 fouls per game. He collected 5 fouls in his very first game as a Hawk. He fouled out in 6 games and had 5 fouls in 14 games. Hell, he didn't have a single game without fouls and had only one game with one foul. His second season was very similar to the first. He averaged 3.7 fouls per game and while he had only 4 games where he fouled out, overall he was as dirty if not even dirtier than before. He was quite productive too though, so it's not all bad. In his first two seasons with Atlanta, he averaged 12 points and 7.5 rebounds per game in about 30 minutes of game time. After the 2006-2007 season, Pachulia reverted back to being a bench player. Al Horford took his role as the starting center for the Hawks. Four seasons. For four seasons, Zaza Pachulia was coming off the bench averaging around 5 points and 4 rebounds per game. And 2.5 fouls, obviously. But even with limited role and minutes, it seemed like he always managed to collect fouls, get in scuffles, make a dirty play here and there. That was his talent for sure. When Al Horford got injured, Pachulia took a starting role and looky here, more than anything, his fouls went up by almost 40%. He got into a fight with Jason Richardson, I don't know what was said there exactly, maybe he said hello, my name is Zaza, I come to hurt you, maybe. Anyways, he spent two more seasons with the Hawks, raising his total with them to 8. After the 2012-13 season, Pachulia returned to Milwaukee as he signed with the Milwaukee Bucks. In Milwaukee, he spent two quite successful seasons averaging around 8 points and 6.5 rebounds per game. By the end of his tenure in Milwaukee, he had one really amazing game. On March 20, 2015, Pachulia recorded 22 points and 21 rebounds. 18 of them were offensive rebounds. That's pretty impressive. But even more impressively, in those two seasons in Milwaukee, he didn't foul out of a single game. Not one and he averaged just 2.3 fouls per game. Little did he know that his best season is about to come. For the 2015-16 season, Pachulia was a member of the Dallas Mavericks basketball team. He recorded 26 double-doubles, he had 41 double-digit rebound games and in total had his best season yet, averaging 8.6 points and 9.4 rebounds. He even almost made the All-Star game in 2016. Pachulia received just 14,000 less votes than Kawhi Leonard. He had more all-star votes than Blake Griffin and Draymond Green. That wasn't enough for the Mavericks to re-sign him though. So in the summer of 2016, he signed with the Golden State Warriors to be a starting dirty center for a juggernaut. He won two championships with them. Hooray for that, but he also made some dirty, dirty plays. Obviously, one of them was the infamous play on Kawhi Leonard in Game 1 of the Western Conference Finals. He wanted to guard Kawhi so bad he slid his foot under Kawhi as he was landing from attempting a jump shot. Kawhi Leonard was out for the series and his Spurs career was pretty much over. Thank you, Zaza. 
and in his second season with the Warriors, Pachulia decided it's a good idea to fall on Russell Westbrook's knee after a play. Obviously his teammates defended him saying that his feet got tangled up, yeah whatever, his feet have been tangling up for almost 3000 fouls in his NBA career. The fact was that Pachulia has had history of controversial and dirty plays. But so much for that. He wasn't disciplined by the NBA and happily won his second championship that year. After the season, the Warriors moved on from Pachulia and he found a new home in Detroit. In Detroit he was quite useless as a player, but he did set a new career high, averaging 6.2 fouls per 36 minutes. Congratulations on that. That was the last season in his NBA career. In total, Zaza, the injury specialist Pachulia, played in 1,098 NBA games, where he averaged 20.3 minutes, 6.8 points, 5.8 rebounds and 2.5 fouls per game. Right after retirement, Pachulia rejoined the Warriors as a front office consultant in basketball operations. So he kinda gave back to the game in a way, teaching them young bucks about how to be dirty yet not get suspended. Thank you Zaza. So in short, that was the career of quite possibly the dirtiest player in NBA history, Zaza Pachulia. What do you think about his career? Was he a good player? Maybe even your favorite player? Could he ever make Hall of Pain? Please leave your comment down below with your thoughts about Zaza Pachulia. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. And I would be so happy if you would even consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. And if on top of that you also enable bell notifications, oh, that's just wonderful. Thank you for watching. This was Purple Prince, and I'm out.